Keep in mind, we work for our vacations. And when we go on vacation and something goes wrong and it ruins our vacation, we can't get more time off of work. We actually have to call that vacation bust and wait until we can do it again. So I carry accessories to make sure if something breaks, I can fix it immediately. Granted, it's gonna suck fixing it on the road, but that way I can go back to my vacation. Anyways, back to what else I got here. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Warwick and you're watching Gas Tax. Today we're standing inside my new 2022 Winnebago 2801 BHS. I introduced this camper in my last video and I told you I'm gonna be doing a ton of accessories, mods, and updates to this camper. And this is the start of it. So this is video one. I don't know how long this is gonna be. I'm gonna try and make it as efficient as possible for you guys, but break it up into stages that make sense so let's jump into how I camp and that will give you a better understanding of why I do the mods I do all right so two and a half years ago I bought my first camper it was a 2020 Winnebago micro mini 2306 I have since upgraded to this one this is basically the big brother of that same concept it's a bunkhouse model except this one is eight feet longer and one foot wider now with that camper i did over 100 plus mods on that camper i've made a video about it uh i'll leave it up here or here for you guys to check out and i just did all the mods and i didn't film anything what i want to do is do the mods accessories all the different accessorizing if you will and show you what i did and break down why i'm doing each of them so that's what this series is about now my previous camper we did about 24,000 miles in two years and it was almost exclusively boondocking and off-grid and off-road and i would say 95 percent of the time we never stayed at the same place more than one night So I like to do my mods based on making sure we can pack up and leave straight away. I did this for many different reasons. I want to see America and I don't want to waste a vacation by staying a week at a place that, you know, maybe isn't the best. So how I view it is I'm going to do a rush around America, get like a Cliff Notes version, if you will. And then from that, in a couple years later, I will fine tune where I actually want to spend more time. So we already have a couple things on the list that we would want to go back to. And there's a couple places we do not want to go back to. So that's how we do it. One night, one place. That being said, we do a lot of setup and take down and I do all my mods to make that efficient. So keep that in mind when I do all the mods here because I pack up every night and I set up every night. So let's jump into all the different accessories I have because the first couple videos or a lot of the videos it's just gonna be accessorizing, right? Making personal accommodations to our daily RVing and then the modifications, the more intensive stuff like adding solar, battery wiring, maybe plumbing adjustments will all be done later on in this series, maybe the beginning of next year. I just wanna get the easy stuff out of the way because rarely, Maybe some of you might think it is daunting, but it's pretty simple. So let's jump into all the different accessories I've purchased and we'll start with, I don't know, one of them. So before we jump into everything, these are most of the tools I'll be using for the accessory installs that I'm gonna be showing you today. Firstly, I am a DeWalt guy, but this Milwaukee set was pretty ideal to keep in the camper when we're on the road. It's a drill, it's an impact driver, it's a little bit of everything, it has the charger, so I'll be using that. I've got different plies, drill bits, a stud finder, Zacto, some silicone, scissors, and you know, tape measure. So that's everything you really need for majority of what I'm going to be doing in the next couple of videos. Alright, so let me set the stage of my family, that way you know what I'm working with. I have three kids, uh, seven to six months and those are my children right i have a big golden retriever about 80 pounds and then there's my wife and myself so in our previous camp uh, obviously we put the kids to bed it's very difficult to watch a movie at night because that camp is pretty small the tv was right next to where the kids slept so 
we didn't really watch TV at night. We want to watch a movie at night if we can. So here is the main TV sitting area and there are the bunk houses. What's nice about this size camper now, we have a door to the master bedroom, but there's no TV. There is a TV hookup there. We don't hook up to the cable or whatever, but there's an outlet. So I've got a TV and a TV mount that we're gonna be doing. So one thing that is crazy is even the three, $400,000 class A RVs, they really don't have a designated space for trash. They maybe have a small trash area or trash drawer, but it is very difficult um, to find an area for a trash can, even in here. So first thing we're gonna be doing is opening up this trash can. It's a two set, there's a 45 liter and a 9.7 liter trash can and I think this nook will fit perfectly. Now when looking for a trash can, what you want to do is make sure you find the area that's gonna work best for you, measure it and then keep searching, 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 searching until you find a trash can that works. Go with anything that actually works the area. Don't go based on reviews. Obviously reviews help, but really you want the trash can where you need it. Now this little nook will let me keep the trash can there while the slide is in as well. So I won't be having to move, at least that's the hope, the trash can every time I put the slide in to hit the road. Just to let you know, in this series there will always be a link down below where you can find all of these different accessories modifications if you would like. So click those links down below every time you purchase from there. It does help me out. If you don't want to purchase from there and you just want to put it in Google, go for it. That's up to you. That's not a problem. But let's jump into all the things I've got planned for us. So moving from the trash can, I've put this little section here. This is everything to do with the kitchen. We have a triple water filtration system there, kitchen utensils, uh, we have spices, we have a paper towel holder, we have a, a drip tray for sponges, we have a drip tray for dishes, and then we have our spice holders. So I'll go through all of those when I install them. Moving on here, this is all the outdoor accessories. We've got our tongue jack cover. We have our equalizer mount. We got a flip up tongue jack extension, propane uh, monitor. Inside here is emergency flares, road flares, as well as a shooting flare. Because when I go off grid, I go off grid. So I wanted that. I got a little foldable shovel. I got a wireless camera system. I got a TPS monitor system. Then I've got the best hitch lock, and then I got my emergency electronic road side flares. Moving on to the center right here. This is all parts and accessories that I carry in both RVs. I still have my other RV, but this is essentially what I carry. Extra bung plugs for uh, the water tank. These little safety things, if your wheel is split, you put this in there and, and your screws will set. This is a voltmeter, fuses, different screws. Screws always pop out on an RV when you're driving down the road. These are called vampire pliers. They help uh, with stripped screws. Extra solar power fuse, double-sided tape. Obviously you got some Gorilla tape. Got a cable lock for whenever you need to lock something up. Then I got a whole plumbing set. These are crimps for all the plumbing. This is the plumbing in the RV. I keep this because you don't want a leak. Now when I first did my previous RV build, we we're having supply chain issues and I knew I would be in the middle of nowhere. So I didn't want to be stranded with a slide not working, a fridge not working and so on. So I looked up my specific camper and looked up all the different issues that people were having on Facebook groups and I bought all of the parts, be it expensive or not, that could have broken. So let's go into those. Right here, this is a whole slide control module. I think this was like 500 bucks. These are water, tank sensors, uh, I heard that one out. This is a sail switch for the furnace. Uh, this is a circuit board for the fridge because I heard those go bad and I didn't want to be left without a fridge. Now those are extreme accessories to purchase because it's about a thousand dollars just for that, I believe, because uh, the slide control of the fridge, it's all two, three, four hundred, five hundred bucks each. So I don't recommend that unless you know how I looked at it, right? If I'm going on a 6,000 mile road trip for two weeks, if one of those weeks was spent waiting for my slide to get fixed, my $6,000 trip was ruined. So I purchased that as an insurance. 
if I sell the camper, I'll probably just sell that separately and maybe for 50% off or whatever. That's how I looked at everything I did for my other camper. That's how I look for everything I do on this camper. Keep in mind, we work for our vacations. And when we go on vacation and something goes wrong and it ruins our vacation, we can't get more time off of work. We actually have to call that vacation bust and wait until we can do it again. So I carry accessories to make sure if something breaks, I can fix it immediately. Granted, it's gonna suck fixing it on the road, but that way I can go back to my vacation. Anyways, back to what else I got here. So I camped in the bushes, in the forest and whatever. I kept a tarp just in case a branch went through my roof in a rainstorm. Here are fire extinguishers. These are big ones. That's the fire extinguisher that comes with the RV. I don't expect you to stop an RV fire. I expect you to get out of an RV if it's on fire and make sure your whole family's safe. That being said, I also put myself 50, 100 miles out of range of cell phone service or whatever. So I need to make sure that if something were to happen, I could protect my family as well as have a place for us to stay. So I over safety, I over prepare if you will. So I've got these two big fire extinguishers. I'll keep one, this is my side of the bed. I'll keep one here in case there is a fire in this area, I at least can put it out with something. Then I'll put another big one over there and then I'll move that one to the outside. I fully expect if this thing ever catches on fire, it's gone. That being said, if it catches on fire to the point where I can put it out after my family is all outside safe, I'm gonna do that. Because keep in mind, I also don't unhook my car. So if this catches on fire, my car is still connected. So I need to either unhook that quickly or put this fire out. So anyways, that's, that's how my brain works. So moving on there, obviously we've got a carpet runner that's gonna come down here. I find carpet runners are perfect. Obviously dust and dirt comes in here, especially with a dog. If you just have the linoleum, then it will always get dirty in here. That absorbs it at least, and then you can vacuum it out. That's a doormat. Here are just some sprays and accessories will go over. Now these are pretty expensive. These are metal. I can't remember what they are, but there's a link down below. But these are good. They work perfectly in my other RV, but great coat hangers. Moving on here, we got a key holder. Now this, okay, this is four zone temperature gauge. What I do with this is, obviously this is one zone, then you got three auxiliary zones. Another thing maybe you guys don't know is I winter camp almost exclusively for cold weather camping. I can't do this hot weather camping. First, the solar paneled RVs can barely run an AC. But secondly, I also like going when no one else is there. So the reason for that is it predicts the weather, if you will. But then I put the auxiliary switches, one in the belly of the RV, because it gets cold, one in the basement of the RV, and then one in the fridge. Now, if I don't want to do the basement, I'll put it at the door so I just have the outdoor temperature. But that way I can see all the different temperatures and know what's happening. Know if, oh my goodness, I need to turn the furnace on because the tanks are gonna get cold or whatever. My lithium batteries need more heating. So that's why I like that. Now, this is something I've never had before, but my kids are getting older and they wanna know what's happening. So this is a daily organizer. So I'm planning on putting it maybe on this closet door so my kids can see the whole vacation ahead of time and what we've got planned. This is the most underrated but most popular and must have accessories. It is a door handle for the screen. Obviously I'll go over that. This is bear spray essentially for if someone's trying to break in or if there is an actual bear outside. Obviously you wanna keep that out of reach of kids and if you spray it inside, everyone inside is gonna be destroyed from it. But I keep it here in case someone's trying to break in or in case there's a bear outside the door or a bear is trying to break in. I don't know, it just goes into that safety thing. Now going on to here, bathroom. So I've got various different towel holders, hand towel holders, cause this is the only towel holder and this is the towel holder. Obviously if you put your towel here, it hangs in the toilet. So I need to figure that out. Soap dispenser. I don't want things laying on the floor or the shelves cause I move every day. So I find this is perfect. This right here is a retractable clothesline, so I will just put it across the top of the shower there. Obviously a first aid kit. 
Uh, this is something that's cheap. It's a snake bite kit. Um, you know, just sucks the poison out if you have to. So, anyways, keep that. And then some of the Happy Camper Toilet Odor Eliminator for the toilet. Now moving on to the bunks, obviously my kids spend a lot of time in their bunks. They wake up at the crack of dawn, so I don't want to do that all the time. So we make sure they have things to do in their bunks. Now this is a ladder. For whatever reason, this one doesn't come with a ladder. The new 2023 2801s, this wall is a ladder. But anyways, so I got a ladder, now let's jump in here. Here are two whiteboards, so I'll mount one here, one here, so my kids can draw. A fan, uh, some of these RVs obviously don't get heat or whatever back here, so I mount the fan, it's a USB fan, I mount it right here and right here. That will keep heat in there. Now this is a desk organizer I will mount on the wall, so they can have all their markers for that and whatever their headlamps, and that will go somewhere on those walls. My kids like the glow in the dark stars when they're out camping, so I'll put these obviously on the ceilings. And then these are some USB lights, which will also go into the USB outlets, so they have uh, a little something. There we go. So they can have a little nightlight. Now guys, I think that's about 80% of the accessories I've purchased. I'm still waiting on some things. And I have some things that I've taken out of my other camper, such as these organizers in here. Yeah, these organizers. So I will go and do videos of those when I do a kitchen specific video or a bathroom specific video. But right now that's the overview of what I have going for this camper. Lots of things are self-explanatory on how to install. Some of them aren't, so I'll be going through that. I also have a full solar system I will be installing later on. It's gonna be about 1700 watts of solar, a thousand amp hours of lithium, and so on. So that's gonna be an intense mod. This video was just the overview of all the different accessories. Now, moving on into the series, I will be going over specific different areas. I'll do a video all about the kitchen mods, I'll do a video all about the outside mods, a video about the bedroom mods, and so on, just so you get an idea. And if you have questions or if you want me to point out something or go in more detail, let me know because the series is starting now. So thanks a lot guys, stick around, hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions, find me on Instagram as well, it's Gas Tax. You can direct message me there if you want. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot for tuning in and I'll see you next time.